AITA for not believing my best friend when she accused my BF of SA? I, 20F, am in college and have been dating my BF Adonis 21 male for two months now. This event took place a week after we started dating. I invited all my friends, about six people, to my apartment to meet my BF for the first time. My friend Chelsea, 19F, didn't have her car since she crashed it three weeks earlier. More info later. My BF offered to pick her up so she can hang out with us. We all wanted to drink that night so Chelsea brought a bottle of alcohol. She has diabetes and a very low tolerance to alcohol. She drank her bottle of liquor, and I drank my bottle of wine. Slowly my other friends started leaving and then it was time for her to leave also. Since my BF brought her there, he had to take her back. Obviously she was drunk after drinking the whole bottle of Pink Whitney. I would have gone to drop her off with my BF but he didn't live in the same city. So I told him to drop her off and go straight home. So he didn't have to drive in a circle and waste gas. While he was dropping her off, I saw both of their locations and saw they went the complete opposite way of where she lives and then park in a parking garage. I was livid. I started texting both of them until they answered. 15 minutes after they parked, they left, and he went to drop her off where she really lived. My BF called me after he dropped her off and he told me she gave him the wrong directions and was instead taking her to her ex-BF's house. She has a BF. He parked in the garage to ask her why she wanted him to take her to his house and she broke down crying about how her current BF, M19, is cheating on her because he is a frat boy and went to some parties. He reassured her that she would find a better man that wouldn't do that to her. Pat her back and took her home after getting her address and putting it in the GPS. Now the next morning, Chelsea woke up hungover and told me the exact same thing. Adonis took the wrong turn, and she didn't correct it. I asked her what happened in that car. She told me that she cried to him about how she thinks her BFM is cheating on her. I asked her why she can't come to me and talk to me about this and why she would go to Adonis before her best friend. She said she barely even remembers the conversation she had with him but that she was crying. I thought nothing of it until almost three weeks later, when she and my other friend Sienna came to my apartment after work. They worked together. They said we need to have a real conversation. So I came down and sat in the car with them where Chelsea told me Adonis touched her leg and tried to kiss her. Her exact words were he touched my leg, and I moved over. Then when we parked, he he looked at me and started leaning in to kiss me. I slapped him and told me to take me home. I thought I was going to get grape that night. Chelsea showed me the snaps that Adonis sent to her. These snaps should have only been sent to me. She also said she was scared to tell me because of how I would react. Then me and Sienna looked at each other with disbelief, and I started crying. I went back to my apartment and cried myself to sleep. After looking back at my snaps, I noticed that it had been almost three weeks since this happened. Why didn't Chelsea come to me sooner? We were best friends. I would come to her without hesitation. Me and Sienna went on a car ride a few days after Chelsea told me. She confided in me that Chelsea told her at work, and she didn't make it seem like Adonis tried to grape her. Sienna was also the one who who convinced Chelsea to come straight to me rather than wait. I texted Adonis to get his side of the story. We met up and talked for almost two hours. He swore on both of his dead parents that he would never try anything with a drunk girl let alone one of my closest friends. I have seen how he turns into a caring dad when he is around anyone who is drunk. He was angry that Chelsea even made these accusations against him. He explained how she gave him the wrong directions on purpose so Adonis can drop her off at her ex-boyfriend's house and he was trying to talk her out of what was going through her head. At this point I am starting to believe Adonis. I told my sisters about this situation, and they were saying real friends wouldn't snap your BF. That really made me think a lot about our friendship over the years. Chelsea would always come to my apartment and convince me to stop doing whatever assignment I was doing and go spend time with her. And I would because that's what friends do. They make time for each other. But she wouldn't do the same for me. I started to open my eyes about her. She lied about a lot of things. Her lies started off small but gradually got bigger. She would lie about spending money, speeding, and eventually she lied about her miscarriage. Chelsea was telling everyone that she miscarried at 22 weeks, but I have a picture of a negative pregnancy test she took in a gas station to prove that she was really 12 weeks when she miscarried. Why would she lie about that? I found out through mutual friends that she was telling people she wanted to have this child, but she chose to drink alcohol and smoke tweed with me while she was pregnant. Why did she tell people that if she she was not taking the proper steps to ensure her child was going to be healthy. If Sienna didn't tell Chelsea to tell me, Sienna would have told me herself and Chelsea wouldn't have told me at all. I started distancing myself from Chelsea and started to realize she would text me something to get my attention and then start talking about something else. On New Year's Day, about six of my friends were at my sister's apartment 20 minutes from the city. It was New Year's, so we wanted to celebrate, so she bought two bottles of Pink Whitney, and I had a bottle of Tarantula. We drank them and decided to go to get some food in the city. We took two cars. It was me and her in the first car and everyone else in the other. Me and Chelsea went to pick up her BF Mike 19. We got to his house and waited for him to get ready. His curtains were open, and Chelsea started taking pictures of him getting dressed. When Mike got into the car, I told him that Chelsea was taking pictures of him through his window. He laughed it off. We went to eat at this Chinese place in the city and went back to my sister's apartment. On the way there we went over some train tracks that gave you airtime in the car we went over them once but she wasn't satisfied. She wanted to go over them faster and when she did, she lost control of the car and went off-road and we rolled about eight times. When we got out of the car, Chelsea was laughing about not being able to find her front bumper. We talked to the police, and she lied to the officer. She told him she didn't know how fast we were going. She later told me we were going 80 miles per hour. The three of us walked away from that car, but it could have ended way worse. After the crash I went to the hospital to get checked out. While I was there Chelsea's sister would not let us talk to each other for fear that I would sue Chelsea. Since Chelsea was driving and it was her car that I was in when we crashed, I was under the assumption that her insurance that would pay for my medical bills. I was asking her how it works so I don't have to worry about it. Later me and Sienna were hanging out when Chelsea calls me and tells me she is outside and wants to talk. I never told her where I was. I went down to talk to her and she told me the only reason I was talking to her was because of the money her insurance would compensate for me. I told her I was trying to make sure my bills were taken care of. She reminds me that Adonis tried to grape her and I told her I don't believe her because she can barely remember how far long she was when she miscarried, and that she remembers a night hand she was drunk. I haven't talked to her since. AITA? 